And good morning. God is great. All the time. All the time. God is great. Welcome to worship, those of you who are worshiping on site, as well as those who will be joining us online. Uh, welcome to First United Methodist Church, and happy Palm Sunday and Camping Sunday today. We remember that our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world, and we live out our vision statement here, believing, belonging, and becoming. And it is Holy Week, so we have several announcements that we want to lift up to you. We have our last Lenten services on Wednesday. Yes, our Wednesday services have been um, a lot of fun. So again, we uh, Wednesday morning, 7.30, we do Word and Table, and we are open for people to come in and receive communion, mm -hmm. and, um, and then also we're still online. And then at 12.30, we're doing our Lenten services, and, and, and this has been just a very special time. So I, again, encourage you to come in if you are available. We are not um, putting that online um, because we are playing some recorded music, but it has been a huge blessing. So again, if you're available at 12.30 on Wednesday, come and join us. And then this year, things are going to be a little different for our confirmation. We're not going to have confirmation Sunday this year. We're having confirmation Wednesday. And so our confirmands, we have eight students who will be confirmed in the faith Wednesday evening at our youth service. And that begins at 645 on Wednesday. And so please pray for our students as they finish all of their homework and pray for our mentors and the parents and families as we all join together for that special time on Wednesday at 645. And then our Holy Week services. Yes, we are doing them live, and we will have recorded services. We are doing it a little differently, though, but we will do our live on Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. here, and then Good Friday here as well at 7 p.m., and then we will um, upload them and have them available 8.15, no later than 8.30, correct? Yes. So our goal is to have them on, if you want to watch them, they will be on our website or on Facebook by 8.30. But we do have some, we want to let people know that if you plan to worship Monday, Thursday at, at your home online, so you're going to worship online, we do want you to pick up a kit. And so we will have an opportunity for people to pick up kits at Shop by the Church that's on Wednesday, or sorry, Thursday, April 1st from 1030 to 1230, and you can pick up a Monday, Thursday kit. And it will, have, um, it will have some communion cups in it, and it will also have some, um, for something for hand washing. And so you're welcome to pick those up. Otherwise, you will be receiving those on site. Huh. And Good then morning. Easter Sunday. Good morning. Good we got a lot morning. to do, don't we? Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning again. Just got to catch everybody back up and bring them back in. But it is. It's a good week. It feels good to have the sun come in. Um, I, I told Cindy, I'm just going to take a real quick break as we catch our minds back together. Cindy's like, what are you going to wear? I said, well, I have my favorite palm tree shirt for Palm Sunday, and I wore my camping boots. And Cindy's like, it's Camp Sunday, Palm Sunday. What do we do? I said, we go out and we have a, a good service, and we remember how awesome it is to be here, and we celebrate all of it in our ways we can. So Amen. it's just, you know, I'm going to say one more thing before we go. Sure. I've had a rough, kind of rough it's been, you know, my sister died, and we'll lift that up later, but um, I sat down, the music started playing, I looked out and saw everybody, I knew this was um, online, and my heart felt good, you step up here in the sunlight of the windows, and this is where I needed to be this morning, and I thank all of you for that, so I'm just excited today. Yeah, thanks be to God, and even though I know we're not doing the handshaking thing, but you can still wave and still uh, greet people warmly, and and welcome them to worship and welcome some folks back to worship. It's, we do celebrate this. And in just a few moments when we have our opening song, we would invite those students who are here and any adults who would like to participate. If you go back into the chapel parlor, you can pick up some palm branches and help wave them around the first at the beginning of our service for the song so that we can, we can truly celebrate this Palm Sunday. Excellent. Let's move to our video. Hold on.
Our call to worship is inspired by Psalm 118. Open the gates of righteousness so, so I can, can give, give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord. Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in, in the, the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord with bows in his hand join, join in, in the, the festival, festival procession. And let us sing, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. And those who want to participate in the parade, go to the back. Those of you who are on site, hang on to those palms for the closing song today as well. And now let's sing our song as we invite those who are young at heart to come up and join Sarah Borgman. This, this is where children belong, welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread and cup, prayer and song. This is where children belong. Good morning. So you know what today is, right? Palm Sunday. <clears throat> well, do you know the reason why we have these? Because it's Palm Sunday, right? Yeah. So we have palms because it's Palm Sunday. Trick question, yeah. Well... We're going to be reading a scripture about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And the people take off their coats and they lay them down on the ground for Jesus and the disciples to come into Jerusalem on. When they run out of coats, they go to the trees and they cut the palm branches off and they lay those down on the ground. Kind of cool, huh? So that's why we celebrate Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Easter. Now, in the Bible, it says that it's the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Hmm. What did Jesus win? Hmm. I don't know. What did he win? Hmm. So they come in. And it's called the triumphal entry. It's hard to think about that it's a triumphal entry when we know in less than a week Jesus is going to die. And in one week, he's going to rise from the dead. Now that sounds like winning, right? But that hasn't happened yet. This is a week before, and Jesus comes in 
to Jerusalem, people are shouting praises, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they lay palm branches down on the ground. That sounds pretty great. But what's the victory? What did Jesus win? Well, I like to think of it this way. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, he knew what was going to happen. Jesus knew what was going to happen in less than a week. He also knew what was going to happen in one week. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, he had already defeated sin. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, Satan was already going to lose and Jesus was going to win. Have you ever been to a basketball game or a volleyball game or a football game and you know which team is going to win? I have. You can just tell which team is going to win. I've never been part of that team. My team always lost, but <laughs> I have seen the teams that, you know, you're going to win, and I just sadly was never on one of those teams. But I'm on Jesus' team, and Jesus' team will always win. And so we want to wave these and remember that Jesus won. The moment he came into Jerusalem, he had already won. Cool, huh? So when we wave these, we don't want to just wave them down here. We want to wave them high and proud. And we want to praise God for what happened in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. Now, I have something else. Coming up is summer camp. Have you guys been to summer camp? Mm. Out in the gathering area, I brought my tent that I take when I go on numb. So my tent is out there and my camp chair is out there. So I just kind of set it up for camp. But then Camp Fontenelle has all kinds of camps that you can go to this summer. And when you go to camp, you get to learn more about the victory that you can have through Jesus Christ. Camp is awesome. It's so much fun. Around the side here, it says all the things you can do. Tree climbing, zip lining, that's not my fun, pedal carts, jump pillow, laser tag, hiking, arts and crafts, petting barn, challenge course. That's all stuff you get to do for fun. That sounds cool, right? Yeah. And then Cindy wanted you to have more fun and started off early. And so Cindy and Pastor Joe, they put together s'mores kits for you. It's got peeps in it and chocolate and graham crackers. So you guys get to take one of these with you. You should see their eyes right now. They're about bugging out of their head. So you guys get to take one of these with you. And if you want to take a camp flyer here, you can take one with you and check out the different camps that are available to you. But first of all, let's pray. Can you join me? This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to Jerusalem, for defeating Satan and sin, for helping us to know you in a very special way. And thank you for Camp Fontenelle, who has special places and things for us to do to teach us more about you. Amen. Let's sing our song of prayer, Cares Chorus. We'll sing through this twice. my bird. 
seated. And we do want to celebrate today, um, Easter Sunday and all of the services that we're going to have. We want to remind you that we will be having four services on site next Sunday. We're going to start at 6.30 in the morning with our sunrise service. We'll have 8 o'clock, 10.30, and Ignite will be at our outreach center yes, we'll returning. Be yes, we can come in person, say hi. And then for those who want to worship online, we will have 1030 service and the six o'clock Ignite service. So, yes. And the Ignite will go back to Facebook Live. So we'll have to get up on YouTube a little later. So just for those who watch us on YouTube, it will not. You'll have to go to Facebook. So. All right. What celebrations do we want to lift up to God today? Sixty-one. Happy birthday to Linda. She said that with very, you know what? That's okay. She's like sixty-one. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Just a number. Yes, I think there was one up above. No. Oh, the altar flowers. Thank you. Today's altar flowers are from Justin and Chris King in memory of Lois Landholm. Thanks be to God. And I'm grateful for, for Sharon Hunt and Lois Smith who helped to put the palms together and to make it beautiful in here. This week we pray for Inland United Methodist Church. And again, we are in prayer for the churches in our district. So um, pray for Inland this week. Other celebrations. Seventy-sixth birthday yesterday. Well, happy birthday to David. All right. So thanks be to God be for to God. those who will be gathering with family after a year. So thanks be to God. Absolutely. Make faces at Pastor Allen if you go to first. Not that you'd be able to see with the mask on anyways. but <laughs> I asked my family, I said, so are we getting together? We didn't get together for Christmas. Are we getting together for Easter? And they all said, you're always busy on Easter. <laughs> True. Tracy reminded me, she's like, oh, Javen's going to be home for his birthday, and we got to go out for dinner, and, and she said, that's okay on the calendar, right? I said, well, what day is that? She said, it's the first. I said, I know that. What day is that? Well, it's Thursday. I'm like, oh, well, we'll figure that out. <laughs> so I will be here Thursday, but we will also fit in a birthday um, um, uh, lunch for Javen. So he'll be 20, 20 on Thursday. So Thanks be to God. Thanks Any other God. celebrations? Yes. Happy birthday too. And it's more than anybody else has mentioned. It's number 86 this week. Number 86 this week. This week. And I think I've been playing for church for over 50 years, about 60 years. Wow. wow. Playing for church between 50 and 60 years. 86. So thanks be to God. <laughs> thanks be to God. What a wonderful celebration. Any concerns that we want to lift up? Sandy Griffiths would like us to pray for her new um, granddaughter, and Ellie um, has jaundice and was taken to Children's Hospital this weekend, so please pray for Ellie. Also, we want to remember those who are experiencing some health concerns right now and those who are being treated, um, and also those who are preparing for surgery. Thank you for all the... Um cares and sympathies for my sister passing on Tuesday. My mom is doing fine. She's just been, it's hard. It was unexpected, but so we're all doing good. Thank you very much. And we'll continue to surround you in prayers. Let's remember all who are grieving in this season. Yes. So for your dad's lungs and 
or relief for him. Any others today? Let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, this is a special time, a holy time, and we thank you for this opportunity to come to you now when we we bow our heads and we open up our hearts as we share um, the concerns and the joys that um, each person has lifted up today. But we also know that there are many things in our lives that we share only with you. But we know that sharing it together in this congregation, in this community of faith, surrounded by our brothers and sisters in Christ, is something special, Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, there are so many things that are happening right now in our world, and there's so many things that we're trying to remember that happened in your world. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the triumphant entry that he made into Jerusalem. For the reminder that while the people of Jerusalem thought that maybe something else was going to happen, God, you do something unexpected every time. And we need to keep our eyes open and our ears open and our hearts open to the unexpected things you do in our lives. Lord, we come before you and we celebrate the wonderful things you're doing, whether it is Camping Sunday and the opportunities to go new places and learn about you. We thank you for a Camp Fontenelle and the other um, Methodist camps in our conference and around our, in our, around, our, around our country and the work that they do, Lord. We pray that you're, um, you continue to bless those camps and you use them in a way that is special and holy, that you continue to um, bring us into a place of celebration. Lord, we pray for our confirmation students this week as they prepare to um, accept, uh, accept membership into your church and to declare their faith before their family and friends. Lord, we thank you for those people who are working hard to continue to go out and serve our community. Lord, there are so many wonderful things. You continue to heal. You continue to bless. Lord, your light shines in dark places, and we thank you for that. But we know that there are still struggles. There are still hurts. Jesus knew what was before him, and we know that life will not always be easy for us. But we can remember that Jesus Christ took a, a sacrifice for us that was, that was incredible and did something miraculous. The Lord, that reminds us that you will be with us everywhere we are and everything we do. So I pray right now, Lord, that you continue to do miraculous things, that you heal those who are hurting, that you strengthen bodies, that you strengthen minds, and that you strengthen spirits. Lord, be with those who are preparing for surgery, those who are healing from surgery, those who are dealing with chronic illnesses, those who, who just do not seem to be getting better. Lord, do something miraculous right now in them. If not heal them, give them comfort and strength in a way that only you can. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for the support you give for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, those who are, are preparing for their family and friends to, to go and be with you. Lord, we know that these are hard times, but God, you are present. And you remind us that we are your presence in some cases, that it is us that need to go out into this world and to lift people up and to strengthen them and to be by their sides. Remind us to be silent when it's time to listen. Give us the words when it's time to speak. Lord, do in us a holy thing so we can give that holiness to someone else who's in need. Lord, we come to you now in this precious time. We remember that we are brothers and sisters, that being in community is so important, whether we are here together right now or whether we are online. God, it doesn't matter to you. You know our spirits are connected. We come to you now as your adopted children, and we pray the prayer that you taught us long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a week for us to remember what is most important to put Jesus first and to put our relationship with him first, to remember his great sacrifice for us and to reflect on the ways that we can continue to be his hands and feet in this world. In that spirit, I invite us to share our gifts with the Lord at this time and I invite our usher 
to bring them forward. And let us rise as we sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all. And let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we are and all that we have, that we may praise you with our whole lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And would you please remain standing as you are able for the reading of our gospel. Today's gospel lesson is written in the 11th chapter of Mark, beginning at the first verse. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, he threw their cloaks over it and sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut from the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the heaven, highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Beth Bethany with the twelve. May God add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of this word. Amen. You may be seated. And would you please join me in prayer? Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. To rent or to borrow a donkey in Jerusalem costs about $100. That's today's market. That's right. To take the journey from the Mount of Olives to the city of Jerusalem on a donkey it costs about $100. And then for another $50, you can receive a picture on that donkey. <laughs> I want you to imagine journeying into Jerusalem just like Jesus. Hmm. There's just something about this that doesn't seem quite right. Now, honestly, that was not one of the options, nor was it one of the privileges when my tour, with my tour group when we had visited Jerusalem in 2006, though it was a very powerful witness on that path. Now, we started at the Mount of Olives, and you do feel this sense of going down into Jerusalem along that narrow path. It was wide enough for just about one vehicle, and so our group of 50 filled that span very easily. And as we walked, we saw the largest Jewish cemetery on, the on our left-hand side. And we could see the memorials on top of those cement grave boxes, pieces of glass and rock, as well as even flowers were on top. Of course, we saw some palm trees along the path, and ahead, we could see the Garden of Gethsemane and some of the oldest olive trees in the city. Beyond that, we could see the ancient walls of the city. 
But knowing that we had walked where Jesus walked was the most powerful. Even without a hundred dollar donkey and a parade with palm branches. Now today on this Palm Sunday, we remember that Jesus made his triumphal victory entry into Jerusalem. And we claim the reflections of Christ through the image of that palm branch. And maybe we'll throw in the donkey too. Now reflecting on our gospel passage, Reverend William Carter insists that the best things are borrowed. Of course the donkey was borrowed. But after all, Jesus was born in a borrowed stable and laid in a borrowed manger. It makes sense that Jesus would enter into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey. We understand these borrowed things when we remember that Jesus had told his disciples, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. The three-year ministry of Jesus relied on borrowed places as he went town to town with his disciples, he stayed in the homes of the disciples' family members and other followers. It isn't surprising to us then that Jesus was going to need to borrow that donkey as he prepared to enter into Jerusalem. Yet as we begin this Holy Week journey again this year, we are reminded how Jesus had each and every detail carefully planned out. As we have experienced throughout this Lenten season, the Gospel of Mark gets right to the point. Jesus had sent his disciples ahead to find the young donkey in which he could ride in Jerusalem. Jesus even gave them words to say if anyone asked why they needed the colt, anticipating that it would happen just like that. And after retrieving the donkey, they placed cloaks over it for Jesus to sit upon. In that moment, the disciples had to have realized that, that this scene looked different than what any of them could have ever imagined and anticipated. Yet they didn't question Jesus, at least out loud. Wouldn't a king ride into town on a white horse instead of a don white donkey or instead of a young donkey? Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was filled with humility and representative of his servant nature. While others in the crowds may have expected the king to enter in with more power and authority, we know that, that the people borrowed branches from the fields and trees and laid them on the path along with their cloaks. The people paved the way for the king. They waved those palm branches, and Mark tells us, those who went ahead and those who followed shouted. And, and I don't know that I had ever noticed in the scripture that each of these sayings has its own quotes around it. It wasn't just one long saying. It was the people were shouting many things, and among them was Hosanna, which means save us, we pray. They quoted the psalmist, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Others shouted, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. And others shouted, Hosanna in the highest heaven. These proclamations were important. We gained that sense that those presents were recognizing that Jesus was the one to come in the name of the Lord, the Messiah. They also recognized that their salvation could only come from the prophesied Messiah. So imagine that excitement that they experienced and celebrated as Jesus made his entry into Jerusalem. And yet, as Jesus set forth on that path into Jerusalem, he had a clear understanding of his journey and his purpose. Verse 11 spoke to me more this year than others. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. At this point in the story, Jesus is living on borrowed time. He's quickly approaching that space and time that he had predicted with his disciples. What comes next is Jesus continuing to challenge those religious leaders in the temple. Remember when Jesus overturned the tables of the money changers? And what comes next is, is Jesus demonstrating his servant nature to his disciples. 
along with a, a last supper and the, the washing of feet. What comes next is Jesus taking time to pray and to prepare for his arrest, his crucifixion, his death, and his burial. All this reminds me that Palm Sunday matters and Holy Week matters. And this story of Jesus is about our salvation. One of my favorite borrowed memories comes from Palm Sunday 1999 in Wichita, Kansas. I was youth director at First United Methodist Church and it was tradition that on Palm Sunday, the youth, the confirmation students, would be taken to St. Mark's United Methodist Church, an African-American congregation, to experience their worship. Isabel was about six months old, and she went along with me with her pretty little dress and her bonnet. As we entered into the sanctuary, we made sure all of the students and all of us were, were dressed up, but when we walked into their sanctuary, we felt underdressed. Ladies were wearing their Sunday finest with, with hats and with gloves and with high heels. The gentlemen were wearing their two- and three-piece suits. And then the pastor, Reverend Tyrone Gard Gordon, came out and he began to note how fine everyone looked. And then he asked about the following Sunday. He said, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And he said, do you know what that means? And there were shouts of, amen, preach it. He said, next Sunday, you dress in your St. Mark's t-shirts. He said, we dress down because there is only one who can be clothed in glory on Easter Sunday. And who is that? And people began to shout, Jesus, Jesus. And he said, that's right, Jesus is clothed in glory on Easter Sunday. People shouted Jesus and continued to shout amens and, until the choir began to sing. And boy, it certainly made me wish that I could see how they experienced the risen Christ. Each Palm Sunday, we focus on that narrow path into Jerusalem as Jesus makes his triumphal entry. This year, we are catching a glimpse of that reflection of Christ through the image of the palm branch. Those branches remind us of the celebration of that moment when people were shouting, Hosanna, save us, we pray. Yet before the glory of Easter Sunday, whether people dress in their Sunday best or dress down with church t-shirts or even in pajamas for those who are worshiping online, you and I are going to have to remember Jesus' journey toward the cross. So this Holy Week, you need to ask yourselves, what are you looking for? Maybe you are looking for Jesus, the miracle worker, to hear your prayers and to act in big ways. Maybe you are looking for Jesus, the prophet, to remind you of God's promises for your future. Maybe you are looking for Jesus, the teacher, to remind you of important truths. Maybe you are looking for Jesus, the healer, simply to heal your body, mind, and spirit. And maybe, as you and I are looking for Jesus, we will truly experience Jesus, the Savior, who entered Jerusalem in complete humility as a servant who knew what was to come, and was able to look beyond the betrayal, the mocking, the pain and suffering. And only saw a sacrifice of love. How will you celebrate the rest of, of this Palm Sunday? How will you experience the rest of this Holy Week? Remember, you don't even have to borrow a donkey to get this right. Yet you are invited to follow Jesus all the way to the cross. May the week that changed the world continue to change our lives. Amen. Friends, let's get our palm branches out. Let's rise and sing our closing song, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Tell me the
the stories of Jesus I love to hear Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here Scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea Stories of Jesus Let me hear how the children stood round his knee, and I shall fancy his blessing resting on me. Words full of kindness, deeds full of grace, all in the light. I'd follow the children's band Waving a branch of the palm tree High in my hand One of his heralds Yes, I would sing Loud as Tosanas Yes, I would sing loudest hosannas, Jesus is King. Hosanna, save us, we pray. And may God bless you and may the reflection of Christ through the palm branch inspire us and remind us that we are not alone on this journey. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.